What's up YouTubers and plant lovers? It's Justin and today I wanted to show you how I transplant and care for my Pelosocerius pachycletus. This is uh, commonly known as the blue columnar cactus. I have it down here on top of the cardboard waiting to go into its new home. Uh, it is a rather large guy. These guys are tree-like cactuses that branch out and get really tall. I want to say around 30 to 40 feet, somewhere around that area. I'm not exactly sure what they top out at, uh, but they are native to around the tropical areas of Brazil. I think some have been found now in uh, Mexico and around the Caribbean also. Like I said, they do have the lovely gorgeous kind of blue skin uh, with the contrasting yellow kind of goatish looking spines. Uh, they really are pretty looking cactuses. So naturally I thought, well, you know, with a uh, blue skin, maybe a blue container. That'll probably clash really hard. But uh, as you do know, they are cacti. So uh, this one is native to more around uh, the tropical areas where it does get a little bit more water. Uh, so during the summertime, this guy kind of needs a little more steady supply of water. Uh, I water mine probably every seven to... 11 days somewhere along there, uh, but you do want the soil to dry out before you water it uh, But you just want to give it enough to where uh, the excess water will drain out the bottom of the pot And if you do have a saucer underneath it empty that about t after 20 minutes uh, These guys do not like to be standing in wet saturated water all day So uh, just like any other cactus they like a good amount of light too. a nice steady kind of unobstructed Light source, uh, direct light source will do really well with them and keep them thriving. Although with my cacti, I like to give them ample morning light and then a little bit of shade throughout the harder part of the day around the afternoon. Uh, this kind of helps them, I find out. Uh, but some people keep them in the, uh, the sun all day long. So I'm going to go ahead and put him into his new container. And of course, with any cacti, you're going to want something that drains really quickly, something that's very porous. Uh, and something that does have a, a moderate amount of uh, nutrients in there. Uh, and miracle Grow does a really great job of that for you. Uh, making the soil really porous so that it just drains out freely. Doesn't hold on to any kind of water. And has a good supply of nutrients in there for your plant as well. So I'm just putting a good amount at the bottom so that all that water will be able to drain freely whenever we give it water. Next that will go ahead and Spread the soil out, pack, compact it just a little bit. You don't want to push it down too hard, uh, but you do want to pack it down just a little bit and kind of create a little divot in the middle. Make sure that the soil is coming up along the sides and it, uh, it, it does go down a little bit lower in the middle to give it like a little divot and some place for the uh, actual roots to sit. All right. Now, as always, uh, whenever I started out, I sanitized my container uh, you don't know where these have been, how long they've been sitting where, and who's all touched on them. So what I do is I scrub them out with hot soap and water and a scrub brush. And as always, I sanitize my pruning shears or any kind of tool that I use that may come into contact with the plant. So I use my isopropyl alcohol and then get in here. And I'm going to go ahead and grab my pruning shears. And I think the root rake will be fine for this one. And sanitize any part of the tool that may come into contact with your plant. All right, so be very, very, very careful whenever you're dealing with your cacti. As always, I've got a piece of cardboard underneath him to keep my uh, hands and fingers and everything from coming into contact with his spines. So I'll kind of brush out some of this substrate and I've got my little bucket underneath me to keep all this substrate from hitting the floor and making a mess. Now, that's not going to get every single piece of dirt or rock, but I am going to trim down the roots just a little bit. <clears throat> These roots are on the smaller side. Some are okay. Looks like he's done okay. I'd say anything that's about over an inch, inch and a half, go ahead and trim up. And that'll allow for ample growth in its new container. I 
Now, as always, you may want to have someone helping you, just because this could end up potentially dangerous and poke yourself. This plant is non-toxic, but uh, it, some irritation may occur if you end up poking yourself. These guys are biters, so be very, very careful of that. All right, so I've got my root rake, and I've got the cardboard here, and I will just allow him to kind of slide down in there. Now I'll keep the cardboard around him, kind of help hold him up to where I want him to be. By all means, if it is just you doing this, make sure you wear gloves too. I've been bitten by this guy and plenty of other cactus several times, so I don't want to say that I'm immune because it will hurt, but I am fairly used to it. Once you get the cacti to about where you like it at, go ahead and add in the rest of your soil. And then as you can, get as close to the plant as you possibly can without poking yourself. And start tamping the soil down around the base of the plant. Now this will securely hold your plant in place as long as rid the substrate of any air bubbles that have gotten in there from adding the soil in. And as always, the soil should go down about an inch, inch and a half, two inches, somewhere around there. And you want to press fairly hard though, you don't want to crush any roots. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and sanitize my root hook. Just because there's a lot of substrate in around the spines so you can take your root hook and just kind of knock it about a little bit to get rid of any of that dirt that's up on the spines or in the ridges. And just take your time. You don't want to puncture the skin. You don't want to break off any spines if you can help it. Now the Latin name for this cactus uh, is Latin for hairy cactus, I want to say. Uh, so where the spines come out there's a lot of different spines there so just be careful like I said it's non-toxic uh, but uh, some irritation will occur if you are poked by the spines so by all means wear gloves and get help when transplanting this cactus uh, when it comes to light like I was saying earlier they do like a lot of direct sunlight, uh, but you do want to introduce them slowly because of this lighter skin. Uh, this plant will burn pretty, pretty easily. And as I said, I like to give mine ample morning sunlight and then kind of uh, have him protected from the house, uh, from the sun for the rest of the harder part of the day after noon. Because in the middle of summer and late summer, it'll get real hot and the scorching sun can kind of burn it. And then again with water, they do drink a little bit more than other cacti do. Uh, so as long as they're getting watered about once every 7 to 11 or 12 days, it's kind of right on key with these guys. Uh, and you don't want to give them too much water. There is a fine line on how much you should give. You basically just want to give it enough water till the excess drains out the bottom of the pot. And then again, you remove the excess very carefully not to get bitten by this guy. All right, looking good. 
And again, I'm not sure if it's because of the pandemic or what. But here in my city, I don't have any more cacti and succulent soil mix. So I'm going to use some very porous and gritty bonsai soil mix just to kind of top it off to kind of weigh the soil down on top. And as I said, it's very porous, so it won't hold on to a bunch of water. So it does kind of work for cacti, though I probably wouldn't fill the entire container up with it. But who knows? It may work. This is just kind of cover up the rest of the roots that the uh, soil they got tamped down may have missed. And it'll add kind of an aesthetic desert-like feel to it because it's all mainly crushed rock. And then it'll give extra heft to the substrate on top there to actually keep the cacti in place. Alright. I guess the only thing I really didn't mention about this guy is uh, the fertilizer. You definitely don't want to give it a full amount of fertilizer. You definitely want to kind of dilute it at least by half. And a well-balanced kind of 20-20-20 fertilizer should do the trick. Uh, and I feed him about once every two to three weeks. Uh, so during the growing season, he's not going to be fed a whole lot, uh, but during the winter time, uh, they do go dormant. So you need to cut the water back drastically and the fertilizer, and don't fertilize it at all during the growing uh, during the dormant season. Uh, but water it enough just to kind of keep the plant alive. And then once spring hits, uh, you can start watering a little bit more. And then as summer progresses, uh, you'll definitely be watering probably about every seven to eleven days, like I said. Uh, and that's just enough to let some drain out the bottom and always remove the excess water too. Uh, I know these guys do have a little bit of pest problems just like any other cacti. I believe mealybugs, uh, red spider mites, somewhere along that do kind of cause them some problems. Uh, but just kind of give them a look over while you uh, transplant. Look on top, look around the spines, look around the skin, uh, and look around the roots too. If you see anything kind of moving around, use a bright light maybe off of your cell phone or a flashlight and kind of go over it. Um, and then check out my videos on dealing with pests or any kind of rot or fungus. Well guys, that's all I really wanted to say about this plant. Um, if you do have one of these, let me know how it's gone for you and let me know about your success or failures with the plant too. And while you're at it, let me know what your favorite cactus. Uh, along with bonza and orchids, cactus are right up there with me. I've probably got over about 30 or 40 different kind of cacti. Uh, I don't know what it is, but they're gorgeous plants. Really cool uh, to add to the collection and everything like that. Uh, so while you're at it, hit the subscribe button or the bell next to it. That way you'll know anytime I've uploaded a new video. You guys take it easy. Have a good one. And don't forget, always plant prudently. Thank you, YouTube. Real quick, I wanted to thank my Patreon subscribers. Pam donated again this month. If you're interested in supporting my channel, please check the link in the description box below.